You're listening to Mentoring Developers. You can tell us if you think that a, a regimented, structured mentorship program is a good thing. Um, but the cynic in me would say no, right? Uh, I think forced mentorships or, or coerced mentorships, however you want to call them will eventually be gamed um, and they won't work as effectively as they should. Having said that, um, we've, I, as an independent software developer, have had uh, interns come and work from our local colleges and from universities. And so effectively, I've worked as, as mentoring that, them and it's been part of their course curriculum uh, to spend a term working at uh, a company doing software development work. So I suppose in that aspect, um, it, it, is, uh, it, it is useful. But again, there the, the, the students are doing it because it's part of their course. So it all comes down to whether or not the student is receptive to it or not. Uh, I think informally developed uh, mentorship arrangements are probably a lot more effective. Do you listen to any podcasts or do you watch any screencasts? I I, I do watch. I, I always watch Traffic and Weather, uh, listen to Traffic and Weather, which is uh, John Sheehan and Steve Marks because I find it hilarious. Uh, and it's about APIs, So, but they don't do very many of them. I occasionally will listen to Herding Code. Uh, I would listen to more, uh, but I don't commute to work. So <laughs> it's kind of... And, you know, running with a phone in your pocket is, is less, you know, is, is not the easiest thing to do either. So um, I, I'll tend to watch screencasts and video stuff uh, whilst running on the treadmill in the wintertime. Um, but no, I, I don't listen to too many podcasts. Do you read any blogs? Um, yes, I read all kinds of blogs, but I no longer, well, I don't really do the RSS thing anymore. Um, I tend to find blog articles through either uh, Twitter or um, uh, Stack Overflow references or Slack channels that I'm a member of. Again, it's about somebody who I know and have some kind of trust relationship saying, here's an interesting blog. Um, I don't. I don't use like a Feedly account, or although I did recently install a, an RSS reader um, on uh, my Windows machine. But like for Windows 10, like there's just really no decent feed readers around anymore. But I've actually I re went back to Outlook. I've installed like the beta of Windows 10, and I put Outlook 2016, and it has a way of pulling RSS feeds into Outlook, which I don't mind. But uh, most of the RSS readers that I found are really they just haven't been sticky for me. Yeah, it's an investment of time. I, I I'm curious about that. Um, you know, you you have this RSS aggregator and it brings in a whole bunch of articles, but then you have to spend the time reading it. And it, your time is I mean, you get if you're a consultant, for example, you get paid by the hour and how do you how do you justify that? Yeah, it, it, it's it's hard, and I mean, I think it was a case of with the the uh, with feed reader. Eventually, you know, you, you just get bankruptcy with the feed reader, much like you do with email. Um, and I find Twitter for me is a better way because if enough people who I follow found an article interesting, eventually it will show up in my feed. I might miss it the first three or four times, but the next time somebody who I follow retweets it, I'll probably see it then. Um, or if it generates some discussion on Twitter between people that I follow, then I'll trace it back and I'll go and read it at that point. Yeah, I and think... that, that's the filter for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, RSS is, is not the same anymore, and, and I think that's what everybody is doing. For show notes and transcripts, visit us at mentoringdevelopers.com. <laughs>